Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Minds and Money in London. And with me here is now Oren Resources and Ivan Bebek, the executive chairman, wants to give us, of course, an update on his terrific company. Ivan, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah, great to have you here. Thank you very much. The last time I remember we did an interview, I think it was January even in Vancouver. Yes. So a lot of really good things happened with the company. Please give us a short update. Sure. It's, uh, it's definitely been the year of Sombrero for us. Uh, for those of you who are not aware of it, this is probably one of the best opportunities on the planet to go find a major, major mine or multiple mm -hmm. major mines. Um, we came into this project. We had a small little 4,000 hectare land position. The theory was that we were extending one of the world's biggest copper belts in Peru by 200 kilometers to the west. Mm -hmm. And what happened here, why it was missed by everyone else, is volcanoes erupted. They covered the rocks. The rocks were too young. The government mapped them as young rocks, right? Oh. So the age of the rocks is so important. When these big events occur, when the big mines are formed around the planet, what we learned this year, this summer, was that we actually have the exact same age rocks as all the major mines next door, which is probably one of the biggest check marks you can get besides the hundreds of meters of 0 0.6, 0 0.7 copper we've seen on surface from our sampling. Mm -hmm. um, we filed our drill permits in July and we expect to have them in February, March of next year, which is incredibly fast. Mm -hmm. It's gone very smoothly. The market thought we were getting held up in our permitting, but we actually delayed our permits mm -hmm. because we actually found some historical drill holes on the edge of our system. Um, what this does for us, if you think about it in a, in a, in a less scientific way, it fingerprints the targeting. Mm -hmm. So you can actually take where the drill holes were, see what they hit, and look at where that signal is elsewhere where you're gonna go drill, we have 12 kilometers of drill targets to go drill with That's copper and gold. That's huge. Um, on a site visit, yeah. if you come down and see it, yeah. you're going to walk on copper and gold for two days. I it, love it. Yeah, <laughs> it's spectacular. And, and, and to summarize it from a monetary standpoint, we think we have the next Las Bombas in our first few areas that we're going to drill. Now, there's a lot more than just that. If you look at Las Bombas, that was a $8 billion asset sale in 2014, of which $6 billion was the value of the metal. It's about $50 billion or $60 billion worth of copper molybdenum in Las Bombas. It's 16% wow. of Peru's mining copper is so, from Las Bombas. you think you see it on the same thing at we, least? We, we see the same scale. Yeah. We see uh, copper gold versus copper molybdenum, which is much better. And, um, you know, the lines of evidence are really strong. Um, you know, our first drill holes yeah. are going are to go by 109 meters of 0.7% copper gold equivalent. Anything around 0 0.4, 0 0.5 and up is going to be considered high grade yeah. here. Yeah. We have power lines on the property. The government put mine power in since we've had the property. Fantastic. There's a paved road to the property. There's towns nearby, not on yeah. the project. So yeah, truly spectacular from infrastructure. Um, that 109 meters of 0.7, it was the only exposure we had that could have gone for two, three, four hundred meters. We don't know. Mm -hmm. So here's what happens in February. We're going to drill on the first 25 drill pads. You can drill as many holes as you want. Mm -hmm. The average depth will range about 400 meters from surface. So everything's open pit, which is extremely, extremely important. And it'll go down to about 800 meters in some of the targets. That's how big the system wow. looks like it could be. So uh, truly a once in a lifetime for us. It's been a long wait. And, you know, as we've been working on this project, another one in Peru finally came together with us called Curibaya. I don't know yeah. if you saw our recent results. That's what I wanted to ask. Yeah, because yeah. this is super high grade silver. Yes, yeah, silver, right? gold, I mean, and copper. It's you, got we're talking about kilograms I yeah. saw on the news release. Yeah, so, so crazy. If you, if you go to this project, <laughs> um, first project we had in Peru mm -hmm. four and a half years ago, we had half of Curibaya. We didn't have the right half. And so we finally got it in August and first order of business. We knew there was high grade there from historical sampling. The guys went out and took 500 samples over a six square kilometer area. They came back, and these are the highlights, 55 samples run from 200 gram silver to 14 kilo silver, several multi-kilo silver samples in that. That's over six square kilometers, so it's not in one vein or one area, it's disseminated. And that's truly a spectacular start to any project. And then you look at the gold numbers, 40 samples run from one to 23 gram gold in the same area. And then you go and look at these huge copper structures coming in from the west, and they're running from one to 14% copper. So you say, hey guys, what does this mean? And, and we're scratching our heads, everybody is, because these are truly spectacular grades. Well, first of all, it's on the most prolific mining trend in Peru. Mines like Cerro Verde, Kia yeah. Veco, Tia Maria, yeah. which was just permitted right next door on the same belt. So you're on the address of major mines, much like Sombrero is on the Las Bombas trend. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got the address of world-class deposits. You've got this incredible precious metals potential deposit. 
but it's a porphyry target as well that's there. And you know, you have to get excited when you look at the model because you're either right on top of a, of a big porphyry or you're right beside one, mm -hmm. copper gold mm -hmm. porphyry. But in this case, we think you could have a substantial precious metal deposit on top or beside the base wow. metal deposit, which is the best of both worlds. Fantastic. Oh, uh, before we come to Committee Bay, um, I thought that you also did like a six million dollar bridge financing. Ah, bridge yeah? fund, yes. And uh, we, we got from some of our viewers, uh, they sent us questions and said, hey, What's going on there? Why do they now already a bridge loan? Because there's still exploration company. Yep. Will there be, let's say, later a bigger financing at higher prices, or what's the game plan? So that's a good question. Plus you are drilling yeah. a lot then next year, right? And uh, you, you need money for uh, sure. Of course. Yeah. Um, so a couple things. This year we've raised, including the bridge loan, we've raised $13 million. We only took three out of the six million of the bridge loan, mm -hmm. and we did all the financings ourselves. It's been insiders, it's been my family, and a large investor, two couple large investors that have helped you know, support us in the marketplace. They yeah. own huge positions, seven million share blocks or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we did the bridge loan versus the market financing is because August, our share price went down to about $1.50 Canadian. We didn't like the terms and we couldn't find the right investor that we wanted to finance us, right? Mm -hmm. We also have asset sales that we've talked about potentially doing. We can't rush those to get lower prices, but the bridge loan has bought us more time, more time to get permits for Peru and to attract a better quality of investors. Yeah. So it was very strategic. It's um, with a friendly investor that owns about seven million shares of the company. Um, so it's not it's not a, a, a laborious or a, or a risky bridge loan or one that could ever hurt us. Mm -hmm. It's with somebody that supports us, you know, in a, okay. in a very big way. So, so it's, first of all, it's a, yeah. it's a good party that that gave us yeah. the money, right? Yeah. Um, we did it because we wanted to see better prices, as you've mentioned, and we wanted to see a better investor. And now, since we've done that bridge loan in August, we're about to get a major advancement in our permitting. We expect drill permits to be complete in Q1 of next year. Um, we're talking to various substantial investors, you know, more on the strategic investor, not so much corporate investors, to come in here to be our next financial partner. And our big fear as a company getting onto something as robust and as, as opportunistic as Sombrero, you have to think defensively. We're at the start of a major bull market we might be extending an entire belt. Not a, not a one discovery, but there could be four or five major discoveries. And if you put your hat on as a major base metal company and you look at copper and how hard it is to find these big deposits with infrastructure and grade and everything that we look at Sombrero for, you're gonna have to be defensive because they're gonna come quick and they're gonna come early. And I say this, having sold our last company in 2014 to Agnico Eagle after we drilled 100 holes, yeah. we didn't have a resource yet and we sold the company for a few hundred million dollars. Yeah. So my point is um, from the market, you'll either see an asset sale or you will see us bring in a strategic partner who would side with management. And the reason why we want somebody specific is because if we start to get it right, we want to take this into the double digits. That's our goal from a shareholder perspective. Can we make it a $20, $30 share price? The asset says... I would love to hear uh, that, uh, yeah, Us too, but, um, <laughs> but, but the asset potential is there, which yeah. doesn't mean it's going to happen. Yeah. It just means that the opportunity is big enough. Yeah. Does it take one, two, or three years to get it? Is it on the 10th yeah. hole or is it on the first hole that things start we happening? Know, yeah. We don't know, yeah. but we want to be prepared, yeah. and this is our group. We're very strategic. Mm -hmm. We want to be prepared. We do have some of the best shareholders in the world, both in North America and in Europe. And, and we do thank everybody for their patience that has taken us to get here. But the reward is truly that big and we think it'll be worth everyone's weight. Absolutely, Absolutely. fantastic. I, well, I'm totally 150% with you on the same page. And this is how it should be, yeah? protect all stakeholders, of course. Absolutely. And you're definitely onto something really big in Peru. Right? Uh, when absolutely. I see your press release, this is outstanding. Yeah. Um, Let's talk shortly about Committee Bay. What's going on there? Because I think you're also using like an artificial intelligence uh, software there, right? Committee Bay, six, uh, five years, yeah. $60 million. We raised it all at a 40% premium to market, which has been great. But the science has gotten a lot better. The guys that are doing our work, they're all former Newmont Global experts. They're incredibly mm -hmm. smart guys. A couple things happened. Um, we brought in AI technology last year and we started using it at no charge to us. And it's really good, but it needs to be advanced with what we learned this summer. That's why we did a smaller program. It was a pilot program. It's targeting a rock type that's not targeting gold, mm -hmm. but is very close to targeting gold properly. The biggest thing that we've done in Committee Bay, there's two things that happened this year. One, we drilled 30 meters of 0.67, and that's not enough to mine in the Arctic. Mm -hmm. 
if you move the decimal point one over to 6.7 grams per ton, then we're in the game and that's the start of a big discovery. <laughs> so we're close, right? It <laughs> okay. is the best hole we've drilled yeah. in five years of continuous gold. Now, there's been three areas we've drilled tens of meters, which are mineable widths, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 meters width of gold, but we haven't drilled grade. What we found out this year on a statistical basis, we took all of our data, we found a signal in our geophysics, that's when you put the electrical and the magnetic currents into the ground mm -hmm. that showed us what the high grade signal is that you should be targeting. So the first ever revelation in geophysics, mm -hmm. we compared it to our three bluffs deposit and now we know exactly what we want to go in and, mm -hmm. and drill. So you will see in Q1 a bunch of targets mm -hmm. that have that signal for high grade. So we've had no problem drilling gold. We just want to drill high grade gold over mining widths and now we think we have the key. Oh, fantastic. That was a great final word. Thank you very much, Ivan. Uh, Thank looks you so really much. terrific. And I would say keep it going, keep the drills going, and hit us with a lot of good results next year. Perfect. Next year's all <laughs> drilling in Peru. Super. Thank you so Love much. It. Thank Appreciate you very much, it. Ivan. Thank you very great. much. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it was Ivan Bebek, the executive chairman of Orin Resources. And yeah, you heard it. Phenomenal drill results this year, of course. Also for next year, they're already yeah, waiting for the permits here for Q1 for Peru. Uh, but also Committee Bay looks outstanding, and it looks like that, uh, well, he He's operating in elephant territory in Peru for sure, but it looks like he has uh, also the elephant territory in his own backyard, in his sombrero property and also with Curibaya and all the other stuff. Check out the company. Thanks for watching us and bye bye from London.